based on the guys we just talked to, it sounds like you're aware that the SEC is kind of struggled with these games the last few days. And, you know, you guys were a couple men down, didn't miss a beat. How important was it to have a performance like this going into the holidays right before league play? I mean, really important. Yeah, obviously, um, you know, watching the games uh, yesterday because, you know, so many of them were in the afternoon that we were still able to talk to our team about it uh, face to face uh, yesterday, the night before the game. And then, uh, you know, even the stuff that happened today, um, it, it, you've got to understand as a student athlete that it's hard to win any game and you have to earn them. And I was really proud of our focus. I mean, we had a, you know, a couple day prep on, on, on Pember and not allowing him to get shot attempts, keeping him off the foul line. Thought we did an unbelievable job on their star player, holding him to one of seven and, and only allowing him to get to the foul line twice. And he's one of the highest free throw attempt players in the country. Graham kind of stepped in for you and picked up some of that scoring load without Nick tonight. Just what do you think about the way he was able to kind of respond? Jalen, you know, Jalen is, is he's got a great flip shot. He's got a great spin move. He can feel the defender go the other way. Um, I thought offensively, I give him a 10 out of 10 offensively. You know, we, we just need Jay. We need some rebounds, you know, um, some physical, some physical uh, in traffic rebounds is, is one of the areas that, that Jalen's got to continue to focus on. But I think from an offensive standpoint, uh, he's a guy you can throw the ball to. He's a great passer. Uh, he's really good in the middle of, of against a zone. Um, and offensively, he, you know, he makes a game uh, become easier for our team. Zoom that you guys call him. I don't know if you do, but he said the guys call him spin cycle Jalen because of his spin moves. Do you guys call him that in practice or just what, what do you think about his, his spin game? I don't, I don't call him spin cycle. Um, okay, we'll call him Jalen, just JG. <laughs> J okay, yeah, or what, what do you think about his, his moves and stuff? Well, I think he does a great job of first of all, he's got a floater. Um, I said on the radio that you know, the only guy that I've ever coached that has this soft touch that the ball just kind of rolls around the lip of the rim and kind of goes in and and is is a soft touch as Jamison. Antoine Jamison had the same eight foot flip floater, um feel the defender spin the other way, dip the shoulder, uh spin the other way. So he's he's uh he's really crafty um you know with his back to the basket and he's he's pretty crafty facing up too with the jab step and go the other way and lift fakes and up and under move. So he's got a repertoire uh, from an offensive standpoint that's, you know, hard to hard to guard one-on-one. -on -one. And then, you know, he's kind of been hit and miss, you know, games he has had some good games. He had games he doesn't play or doesn't show up if he's out there. Do you maybe think he can get more consistent? Well, uh, I think that's his, you know, um, that's his challenge is to, is to give consistency, not just in a game, but consistency in practice. Um you know, consistency and getting into the gym on his own and, and all those things become really important uh, because he's 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 really skilled. Um, and then obviously, you know, the, the, the rebounding becomes extremely important in traffic once we get to the SEC. And then Nick, you know, the, the said the release really said out indefinitely, it's kind of management. It was kind of almost verbatim what the release said when he missed those, you know, before the opener. Kind of where do you think you guys are with him and is there is it realistic he could play against LSU or is this just you just got to see what happens? How frustrating is it for him and for you guys? Yeah, I, th I think I mean Nick is a competitor and and he and he looked forward to playing uh, for the Razorbacks and he's you know he's he's kind of been in and out of the out of out of the you know lineup or whatever and and uh, we just want him to get healthy as quick as possible and and for him to be a hundred percent and and um, you know and then for the other guys it's it's uh, you know everybody got an opportunity tonight and. I thought Joseph Pinion did a great job. He stepped up. He knocked down some shots. I thought his experience um, was really important playing 19 minutes tonight. I thought that was great for uh, for Joseph and and uh, you know the game the way it unfolded with with uh, you know with Nick not playing and and TB not playing and then Jordan uh, Walsh and and Anthony Black getting two fouls in the first half. I thought it allowed us to to what could happen, you know in the next couple games for other guys to figure out that maybe we play three bigs at a time and, and we got to try to figure some of this stuff out on the fly.
was going to ask a follow-up about Nick. It, the thing that he's dealing with, is it something that he had at the end of the game against Bradley? Is it the same I'm not thing? Gonna, I, I mean, he's out indefinitely, and that's that's what it is. And um, so there's, you know, there's there's nothing else to, you know, he's out indefinitely, and he's, he's going to continue to rehab um, as best as he can. And opinion, how difficult is it for a shooter like that to to come off the bench late in the first half and, and knock down shots the way he did tonight? Well, I mean, I when you're a great shooter and, you, you know, the the hardest thing is, you know, do you still have confidence? You know, and, and uh, when he comes in the game, you can kind of see teammates, coaching staff. We feel like when he shoots, it's going to go in. And that's what, a, you know, when you're a great shooter, that's kind of the air that, that everybody has. Eric, I think tonight was game seven without Nick. I'm just curious. Do you feel like the rest of the guys have kind of developed a chemistry to, I don't know if they have maybe a, a know-how exactly, but do you feel like they've kind of developed a, a chemistry to play well without him? I mean, I think the guy, the, you know, this, this group is, uh, obviously we're young, but they're, I think they're really mature. Like, whether a guy gets in foul trouble, uh, whoever's in uniform, I think they've done a an excellent job of uh, being ready when called upon. You know, um, Devo's in the starting lineup. He's used to that. Uh, Devo's minutes tonight were incredible. And, um, you know, so I think that, you know, with, with whether it's, you know, TB being out or Nick, you know, it's an opportunity for somebody to step in. And and uh, like I said, I, I mean, Debo Davis, in my opinion, is a, a, a starter, whether he starts or not. Like, he's going to play the minutes. If you look at Debo's minutes the whole year, they're they're really high because of how hard he plays and what he gives our team. And um, certainly, you know, when, when TB was out, you know, somebody got a new opportunity or minutes are available and Kamani's done a good job in those and – um, you know, that's just kind of the way it's going to have to be right now is, is somebody's going to have to step. I thought Jordan Walsh's second half minutes were great too. Now you had 50 or the guys had 15 steals tonight and Kamani and Kai led you with three. How were, how were those guys able to come up with those numbers? And I just looked at Ken Palm Kai's top 50 nationally and still rate. Like how, how are these guys able to, to do that? I just think like, active hands and and uh trying to be disruptive and all those things are you know really kind of in our dna i think that some of the players like jordan walsh are i mean he's a high steel player no matter where he plays you know he's i said it when we you know recruited him and and he committed that he's kind of a violent defender with the way that he jumps passing lanes and and uh you know so i think we got a lot of guys but certainly you know uh Makai's hands for his size and his anticipation, you know, you don't see a lot of uh, of centers uh, create steals and blocks kind of at the same time. Coach, I remember after this pre-Christmas game last year, you said it kind of wrapped the first segment of the season, the way you look at it. Uh, just with everything going on, the expectations, the newness of the team, the injuries and the things that you guys have dealt with, I, I mean, how do you feel about where you're at and, and the direction you're headed going into SEC play? Yeah, I mean, I do think that this kind of closes, um, you know, like a chapter on non-conference. Obviously, we still have Baylor, uh, but I kind of look at that. It's in the middle of conference. It's a it's a really good opponent. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're three points away from being undefeated. Um, I thought our schedule was harder this year than it had been in it, in the other years that, that at least that I've been here. Um, so, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really pleased, but that – like I said, that chapter's kind of over now, and and um, you know we have to open on the road, and and um, you know the LSU coaching staff's done a great job. I've been really impressed with the changeover on their roster and and um, how hard they play, and and uh, you know he's brought some of the guys that were with him at his at his prior uh, program, and they've done a really good job. So I've been I've been impressed with them, and you know we got. We got to try to figure out how to how to play well in Baton Rouge. That's our, you know, kind of the the next and only thought process. Yeah, Eric, I don't know if I've ever seen a stat like this. Last two games, you've outscored your opponent sixty nine to fourteen. 
on points off turnovers. Do you do you remember doing that? To bat? I mean, I know that these aren't Kentucky and Alabama, but they're not bad teams. I mean, I think they're 15 and nine combined. I mean, what, what do you think of that stat? I just think, I mean, I think we've really been, you know, our practices have been, um, there's been a lot of like drill work on trying to create turnovers. Um, but I do think that just our length, I think Anthony, you know, guarding point guards with his length helps and Ricky's got great quickness and length. And obviously Devo, in my opinion, is as good as on ball defender as there is in the nation. And uh, Jordan does a good job. And then, and then as Scotty brought up, like with Makai, I mean, he's, he's a high steel player too at his position. So, but again, I mean, we're going to, we're going to, you know, when you, when you get into conference play, for the most part, teams take a little bit better care of the ball. I mean, Walsh was on him quite a bit, and maybe Makai was there. Or who, who do I mean, I know it's team defense in the, in the big picture, but who, who do you credit for really shutting him down? I think he was one for seven or whatever. Yeah, there was really three guys. It was it started off Jordan Walsh, and then it led to Makai, and then and then and then for the bulk of of that uh, last twelve minutes of the, of the first half, Kamani did a great job on him. Great job being physical. And I heard on the radio you're going to San Diego. I guess you're going out early in the morning, get a little Christmas out Hopefully there. Hopefully we get out, yeah. Okay, well, go good luck with that. It's how good is it to go – I guess you go out to your mom and your other son and all that. Um, how good is it to go – you know, you get a little break, the guys get a little break, and you can enjoy it because you're, you're coming off, you know, pr pretty good games of life. Yeah, I think – I mean, tonight was, you know, it was an opportunity for everybody to play. So I think that, that, that's, a, that that's a good feeling for everybody. Um, and, I, you know, I, I again – it's only non-conference, but I do think going into a, a three-day break, which is mandatory for the NCAA, um, I think that it's a it's a good way for these guys to go home and celebrate with their family and 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 holidays. And it's also important that you know that that you mentally get a little bit of a break away as well. So hopefully, everybody's in the good mental frame when they come that's back that's one where the, the guy said you know curtis asked him and curtis asked you about what's going on in the sec like you know wofford beating Ole miss or what, drake beating mississippi state but they said you actually showed him film of those games and we know that's happened you know every freaking night you, you go what did that happen you know but you guys have avoided that well what's been the key to that and um obviously the guys you know focused in when you showed them the film and talked to them about stuff yeah, I think the big thing, Bob, is just uh, having incredible respect for your opponent and understand the fact that it, that every game you have to go earn it and you got to go take the game away. Um, nobody hands you anything. You got to have great respect for your preparation. And, and um, I've never made a team bring scouting reports to to the arena, which they had to tonight with notes. And that's I've never done that before. Um, so I'm I want to try to get better and and. Um, but we we did that we we gave them the scouting report two days ago and they brought it tonight with notes on it and um coming so uh and then a bunch of my mom's friends yeah okay well when, so christmas and a birthday is, is, is your mom like 85 now or how old is she she's a, i'm sorry 80 okay well, all right 85 <laughs> <laughs> great for her age. hi you guys thanks uh anybody going to lsu 